Hi guys, it's Andrew and today I'm going to talk about Flutter interviews, questions I'm asked during Flutter interviews and point some tips for junior and seasoned developers. I plan to do a few videos about interviews covering different topics from different perspectives of the interview. So let's start. I'm a team lead of mobile department and my duties include basic things like code review, mentoring, coding of course, but also interviewing candidates. During my career, I have interviewed a lot of people for different positions. Android developers, front-end developers, uh, especially for React position, and uh, for the last few years, Flutter developers. The interviews for Android and front-end positions are pretty much stable. I mean, the market for these positions is not new and it's clear what to ask and what interviewee should know for every type and level of this position. But with Flutter, it distinguishes a bit. The market for Flutter apps is still small. Well, that's compared to the other mature markets like Android, iOS, mobile development, or front-end development. And Flutter developers should know not only the Dart language and the Flutter framework, how it works, but also a lot of aspects of mobile development for different platforms, how to build and configure the app for iOS and Android devices. And you know, a lot of other small, not necessarily complicated things, but during the interview I have to understand whether candidates has worked with it or not. That allows me to understand skills and level of experience. So, I usually start the interview with a suggestion for the candidate to talk about the experience, previous job position. Um, also, I ask to describe the most challenging problem the person has ever solved or the solution the candidate is most proud of. Of course, such kind of questions are for middle and uh, senior developers. In case of interviewing junior developer, I will not start the conversation with such kind of questions, because obviously this person hasn't had such kind of experience yet. So at the beginning of the interview, I usually ask juniors about the courses they have attended to or what kind of online courses they have enrolled to learn Dart and Flutter development. Another important thing is the small test apps the person has already built, because even if you're a junior developer, you need to practice somehow, right? So that's the interview starter. Then I usually continue with technical questions and this is my favorite part of an interview. I really don't like the whiteboard interviews or even worse questions that require paper and pen, especially the implementation of specific algorithm. I've been to a few interviews like this as a candidate and I have to say it's just not the way it should be. It takes a lot of time, like hours to write algorithms, discuss technical things behind these algorithms, visualize data structures and uh, possible solutions to the question asked by uh, interviewer and uh, stuff like this. Maybe this approach is good for big companies like Google or Amazon, but not in most of the cases, in my opinion. So let's get back to my technical interview process. And I want to mention that a lot of things depend on the actual position which needs to be filled. For example, if a person applies for junior developer position, then I'm not going to ask questions about the architecture and uh, what this person would choose for a real-time multi-user app, for instance. I always adjust questions for an interview according to the skill level of the interviewee. And in case with junior candidate, I need to check the basics first. 
This will allow me to understand whether the person knows the Dart programming language, object-oriented programming, Dart collections, and asynchronous programming. Also, I would ask some basic questions about the Flutter framework, for example, difference between stateful and stateless widgets, uh, what is the build context, difference between packages and plugins, what is the hot reload and hot restart, and uh, also something about scaffolds, rows, and columns. So the basics of user interface. The same thing is about the state management. Junior developers should know the basic usage of some kind of state management solution, like a provider with change identifiers or block pattern. Another really important thing is Git. The person should know the basics of Git, how to manage repository, branching, merging, and stuff like that. What also important is if the person has experience in a teamwork. This is really important. This allows me to understand if the person cares about the code quality and following best practices in collaborative workflows. Okay, what about the more skilled developers who already have commercial experience and a few projects built from scratch to publishing? So in such kind of interviews, I also ask technical questions, but I assume that the interviewee already knows some of the basic topics and that's why the questions are more advanced. For example, someone with middle and senior skills has to know dark programming language with complicated topics like um, streams, for example. Can explain what the event loop is, what isolates are and how to use them. Also, candidates should know the responsive UI design practices and have experience in writing different sets of tests, including unit tests, widget tests and integration tests. Another important topic is the state management in Flutter apps. For example, experienced persons should know not only differences between common state management solutions, but also should know when to use which and can provide valid arguments that support the answer. The same thing is about the project architecture, how to organize project, how to make it scalable when it's growth and stuff like that. This allows me to understand how the person is experienced in different topics and how the person thinks, the way they think, and how they make technical decisions. And it's not only Flutter-related things. The interview includes questions about Firebase services, continuous integration and continuous delivery solutions like Godmagic and Bitrise, or maybe self-made solution using GitHub Actions or other providers. This is usually a big plus. Middle and senior Flutter developers should use best practices for releasing apps, or at least can explain what they use for such kind of tasks. If they can't put together a few words about how they release apps, that's a warning sign. Also, I like to discuss different scenarios and solutions during the interview. I really like to ask questions about what tools and packages would the interviewee use for fully responsible mobile app, for different screen sizes, for real-time multi-user app or background location-based app. You know, the background processing in Flutter apps is a huge topic and it's important to know what the candidate knows about it and what the possible solutions are. So I'm listening to reasoning for certain solutions to propose scenarios and making notes for myself. The really important thing that plays a huge role in the whole interview is the way people answer the questions. The answer should not be peremptory. If interviewee thinks that his answer is the only right answer and he doesn't consider other possible solutions or ideas, then it says a lot about the person, especially about the decision-making and problem-solving skills. So when the interview is over and I have all the needed answers, I have to make a decision on whether recommend this candidate or not. 
If candidate has the side projects, it's a big plus because it allows me to check the project architecture, the way candidate implemented state management in the app, also code quality, UI implementation, and the way person organizes repository and stuff like that. Another huge advantage of the candidate is if he has its own published Flutter apps in Google Play and Apple Store. It shows strong interest to Flutter development and shows the fact that candidate has come through all the stages of development process, from an app idea to publishing. And in some cases, when I don't feel confident about the candidate, especially for junior and middle positions, and especially when the candidate doesn't have code to show on GitHub, in these cases, I recommend additional interview step, which is the test assignment. This test assignment is a really small task, but that will allow me to see the coding skills and understand whether your theoretical knowledge backed by solid coding skills. Test assignment usually requires the setup for a state management solution, few screens and network calls, and UI implementation. Tests are optional, but would be a plus. Well, that's not a rocket science, the task is simple, but the implementation demonstrates me the code quality, and I understand the way the person organizes project and implements business logic. That's the most important one. All of the mentioned things help me to make a decision, and this approach always proves its effectiveness. Also, I would like to add that I prefer interviewing developers that have switched to Flutter from Android and iOS, because these candidates know the specifics of this mobile development field and already know how to build, release and config apps. Well, if person has switched from web development to Flutter, then native code, Xcode configs and Gradle dependencies will really make the learning curve harder. But this, of course, doesn't mean that the candidate can become a great Flutter developer. So, in this video, I wanted to share with you my approach of interviewing junior and senior Flutter developers and uh, some of the interview questions I usually ask during interview. Like this video and leave a comment below with your thoughts about my approach and what you ask interviewing others and what questions you have been asked during Flutter interviews. See you in the next video. Bye.